Let's kick things off with the final grade one of the year for the Naira Circuit. The final grade one in New York for 2018. The grade one cigar mile, a one-turn mile. Let's take a look at the field. Eight of them signed on. Post-time favorite, the well-traveled Mendelssohn for Aiden O'Brien. He was bet down to odds of eight to five. We all know I'm a huge fan of Mendelssohn. I didn't like his chances coming into a race like this for a number of reasons. We'll go into that a little bit more after when we talk about the race. But he was no slam dunk in here. Now, this was not a vintage sort of edition of this race. It was very, very wide open. It didn't seem like there were any superstars in here. Uh, but we got a, a pretty emphatic winner in here. I thought, all things considered, this was a big-time effort from this Chad Brown trainee. Here is pattern recognition taking down the Cigar Mile. Followed by Stan the Man as the field turns for home. Pattern recognition clings to the lead by a length and a half. Pat on the back. On the outside, True Timber is finishing well. Sunny Ridge comes alive down on the inside of Mendelssohn. They're in the final furlong. It's Pattern Recognition who just keeps on going. An outstanding performance from Pattern Recognition coast to coast in the Cigar Mile. True Timber... Pattern recognition gets the job done with a 105 buyer speed figure at odds of 5 to 1. The runner up, True Timber, second longest shot in the board at odds of 31 to 1. And Sunny Ridge rounds out the trifecta at odds of 6 to 1. Mendelssohn defeated as the 8 to 5 favorite. He finishes a relatively dull fourth. Let's talk about pattern recognition a little bit. He is 5 of 11 lifetime, 10 times in the exacta. From 11 lifetime starts, over $800,000, owned by Clarevich Stables Incorporated and William H. Lawrence, trained by Chad Brown. Get used to hearing that name in this recap edition. He's going to pop up a few more times as well. Bred by Ocala Stud in Florida, ridden to victory by Jose Ortiz. Congratulations to the Ortiz family, another baby in the fold. And you can see the pedigree at the bottom of the horse card for pattern recognition. He is by Adios Charlie out of a high cotton mare named Almost a Valentine. I made mention a 105 buyer for pattern recognition, a 124 Time form U.S. rating. <clears throat> Some things to consider with Aqueduct as a whole. Uh, well documented from a number of reliable sources that the track at Aqueduct on Saturday was all over the place. Where early on the card it was very, very slow, uh, yielding just incredibly slow times. Then something changed dramatically and you get to a race like the Cigar Mile where they stop the clock in sub-135. Um, time form U.S. had the main track at Aqueduct color-coded as a, the light red shade, meaning it was slightly speed-friendly, perhaps he helping a horse like Pattern Recognition. Um, in the grand scheme of things, I thought this was a, a good effort. I didn't like him coming into this because I thought he had everything go his way in the Kelso in that most recent start at Belmont Park, but it just didn't matter. He broke sharp. Jose went on with it, got him down. I don't want to say he dissuaded Mendelssohn from the lead because Mendelssohn, let's call a spade a spade. He just wasn't very sharp in this race. Um, they went 22 and four for the, uh, the opening quarter, 20, uh, 45 and three, excuse me, for a half, nine and three for three quarters, and again they stopped the clock at 34 and four. Uh, I thought it was a good effort from this horse, and it sounds like there's a real possibility that they could go on to the Pegasus World Cup with the horse like this. He's never gone a distance at a mile and an eighth in the past. Chad has sort of made it made mention, and I think it's accurate. If he's going to get a mile and an eighth, or you're going to try it. Gulfstream Park's the place to do it with his running style being forwardly placed. Uh, the way that he galloped out, I, I don't have too much of a concern about a mile and an eighth. I think he could certainly get it. The two-turn sort of configuration, perhaps that's a little bit of a different ball game. But pattern recognition, he's developed into a nice, talented horse, and I don't really have anything to knock about this effort. The one thing I will say is when you look and see a horse like True Timber, who is a solid horse, he is by no means a superstar. I wouldn't even really consider him a a true grade grade two, grade three type. I would I, I would look at him sort of as a fringe grade three, then probably more of an allowance type. When he comes and loses this race by three quarters of a length, and he comes with a legitimate bid at the very end of it beneath Joe Bravo, that's when I look at this race and go, you know, my concerns going into it about the strength of it, I think they're validated with a horse like True Timber running second in here. Uh, Sonny Ridge, he comes up the inside, runs quite well. He was against the grain in that run at, Ke at uh, Belmont Park in the Kelso. Perhaps he's just not as good as pattern recognition. Uh, it was just a little bit of a surprise to me because when you had gone through and, and, and taken a look at a few different things, I just kind of figured that maybe this was an opportunity for Sonny Ridge to, to outfinish a horse like pattern recognition. He unfortunately was unable to do that. He finishes a solid third. Mendelssohn has been retired. He will not come back in 2019. They were talking about running him in the Pegasus and then retiring. 
he's not going to do that. At least that's the, the plan right now. Um, you got to look at it a few different ways, Wh wherever you stand on Mendelssohn. If you think he was a bum, if you think he was overrated, or you think he was talented. Uh, this was a long campaign, no matter how you chop it up. The number of times he went, he, think about it, he went from his home over in Europe over to Dubai. He went back home. He went over to Kentucky. He went back home. He came back to Belmont Park. He went back home. Came back for the Travers. Went back home. Came back for the Jockey Club. Went back home. Came back for the Classic. Went back home. Came back for this race. That's a lot of miles for any any living creature. Forget about a racehorse that is supposed to go out there and produce their A effort each and every time. I also combine that with the idea that I never thought that this one-turn mile configuration was really what he wanted. You look at the Dwyer. That was his other just giant dud. Again, draw a line through the Kentucky Derby. You, you know who's. I look at this race and say it was a combination of this horse. He just had been. It was a long, long campaign for him. Uh, perhaps his best race is not good enough to run with a horse like Pattern Recognition. But this, you know, I, I just didn't like him coming into this. And frankly, I was a little bit surprised he took as much money as he did. Mendelssohn. I love you. I've always been a fan. Hopefully his sort of genes are passed along and some of these babies of his will come out and they'll end up being superstars. Pat on the back was the horse that I liked in this race. Uh, he was closer to the pace than I thought he would be. I think that was a combination of things. When Mendelssohn doesn't go or isn't able to make the front or at least able to push a horse like Pattern Recognition, uh, I think all of a sudden that changed the dynamic of the race a little bit. And I, I don't have a problem with what Dylan Davis did. It just didn't seem like the horse really kicked on. Um, maybe he's not this good, but, I, you know, it is what it is. It took a shot in here. At, 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 uh, look, I was more than happy with the price of 15-1. to 1. Just couldn't quite get the job done. Stan the Man, I thought he was overmatched. Disappointing effort from Timeline. He never showed any sort of real interest. And as far as Coppertown is concerned, I, re I realize he didn't have a good start. He got banged around. coming. He stumbled and got banged around a little bit. I, you know, a, a horse like Coppertown is always a dangerous one. One way or the other, because you look and see he's so lightly raced, what he has shown, flashes of brilliance, looks like he could be anything, but at the same time, I brought it up when I talked about it in the preview show, when you looked at some of the figures and compared them, there was no real guarantee that he's actually this good. So I'm sure most people will look at this and say, oh, well, the start compromised all chance, and he never, he was never going to fire at that point anyway. Fair. I, I can't really dispute that. But at the same time, this is a, a, one of those instances where if this horse shows up in another big race, I'm still not totally convinced that he's of this caliber. One speed figure set would suggest he is. At least one other, and a couple other that I've taken a look at, would suggest that he is not that good. We'll find out in time. Hopefully he shows up in another spot and he can prove doubters like myself wrong or he can prove the the loyal fans and the loyal faithful the betting public that uh, he is every bit as good as he's looked visually on the track but at two to one he had some issues at the start of the race and that certainly compromised his chances would he have run with a horse like pattern recognition we'll never know at least until the next time but pattern recognition he backs up that win in the kelso i thought he was a little bit dressed up coming out of that race Guess what? He answers the bell. He gets the job done with an impressive front-running score. In the grade one cigar mile, 105 buyer, 124 time form U.S. rating, and it sounds like a possible starter in the Pegasus World Cup. 